Restauro. Restauro. Remus. Okay. Remus. Okay. Roble. Roble. Ruizo. Ruizo. Ruizo present, sir. Sakan. Sakan. Sanchez. Sanchez, Sihalbo, Siton, 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 sir, present, Siton, Tanhenti, Tanhenti, present, Tanjenti, sir, Tarongoy, present, sir, yeah, Tarongoy, Tarongoy, Oltanero, Oltanero, sir, present. Okay. Sir, dia pada present. Ah, present ayo ko, sir. Okay. Okay. So, expected that on Tuesday we'll have our quiz number fourteen, all about this topic today. So our topic today is all about digital citizenship versus global citizenship. Okay. The learning outcomes for this topic are. Number one, we can recognize the five tenets. So when you say tenets, it means principles or beliefs. No? Recognize the five tenets of global digital citizenship and the nine elements of digital citizenship. Number two, we can compare and contrast one's role as a citizen of a community and that of a digital world. Okay? Number three, we can share ways on how we can observe social, ethical, and legal responsibilities in the use of technology tools and resources. So here's the topic. 
So let's start with digital citizenship versus global citizenship. Okay. So when you say global citizenship, it means everyone sees the world as a community in which all people live and prosper together. So regarding of whether we are offline or we are online, we are digital or non-digital, as long as we belong in this world, so we belong to this global citizenship. The word there is, we belong to this world as a community. I know we have community, we have UC community as students, and you have also community in your community, in your place, and we have this Cebu community, and we have this community as a nation, and the next is the world. So if we belong to this world, and we leave this world together, so we belong to this one, we call ourselves as global citizens, okay? So we belong to this global citizenship. So the next one is digital citizenship, okay? So it adheres to guidelines that govern the ethical and responsible use of technology and acts responsibly in all relationship and interaction in the dig digital world. So if we are going to look at it, so digital citizenship talks about ethical and our responsibility, we call it ethics and responsibility in the use of technology. So in this digital citizenship, it involves already the use of technology, how we govern ourselves in the use of this technology. The two words there, I think, ethics and responsibility. Okay, so let's go to the next one. So. If we are users of this technology, so we can call ourselves now as a global digital citizen, a combination of the two. Like for example, we're having our class now in this Google Meet, so we can call ourselves now as global digital citizen, as long as you use internet also and digital materials. So global digital citizen is a responsible, ethical citizen leveraging technology. What do you mean by the word leveraging? When we say leveraging, it means we are profiting. It means we have advantage in using this technology. Okay? So the word is responsible and ethical citizen using this technology. Global digital citizen, it will foster community on a global scale through connection and compassion. So we are now connected through this internet, the inter, uh, interconnected networks. Now, global citizen govern technology for the benefit of both ourselves and others. So it means if we are users of this technology, it does not mean that we will only be concerned about ourselves, but also be concerned also about others. Okay, global digital citizen is a citizen that views world as an interconnected community and we are interconnected now with your classmates, with the world, with your teacher and with our school. So we can call ourselves now as global digital citizen. The next one. There are five tenets of global digital citizenship. So, what do you mean by tenets again? Principles, sir. Principles, you must, sir. Okay, so, beliefs. beliefs and principles. Very good. So, if you want to answer sometimes, you can write also in the chat box now. Okay. The five tenets of global digital citizenship. Okay, para niya to, uh, Number one, personal responsibility. Okay. It means, it is demonstrating how we manage ourselves in matter such as personal finance okay so you know in this world uh you know business today we call it e-commerce is working so much on the internet okay next we can manage ethical and moral boundaries personal health and wellness so it's not only about using the internet the word is always there ethics another is 
moral boundaries. It doesn't mean that whatever we want and whatever we think, we will always express that in the internet. It's not. Why? Because we have also moral boundaries. Personal health and wellness. Sometimes people forgot about their health. There's so much focus on this technology sometimes. There's so much focus on Facebook and other things that they forgot about their personal health and wellness. Okay? So that's very important as part of our personal responsibility. Another one is our relationships of every kind, both online or offline. It does not mean that we become actors or actresses when we are here in the internet, okay? Always think that you are the same. You are the same both online or offline. Therefore, the first principle is we must have personal responsibility. Number two, okay, global citizenship. But before we're going to discuss about this one, you're going to watch first this video, okay? So take note about everything that is in the video. To me, being a global citizen means to understand all the cultures of the world and uh, knowing people from all around the world and uh, to understand them. I feel like a lot of times we get caught up in, I guess, our lives in our city and we don't necessarily so know what's happening in other like places. Music. So just, you know, having friends that are from Ghana or that are from London, like you know what's happening in other parts of the world and I feel like that's important to be successful. Being a global citizen means being aware for me. I citizen means to understand all the cultures of the world and uh, knowing people from all around the world and uh, to understand them. I feel like a lot of times we get caught up in, I guess, our lives in our city and we don't necessarily know what's happening in other places. So just, you know, having friends that are from Ghana or that are from London, like you know what's happening in other parts of the world and I feel like that's important to be successful. Being a global citizen means being aware for me. I, it means that I, I'm aware of differences in people, I'm aware of different cultures, and most importantly, I'm open for all kind of people. To me, being a global citizen is more than just like thinking about your local community, it's thinking bigger than that. Um, so like, especially with study abroad programs, you really get to like meet people from different cultures and expand your horizons. If you're talking to someone or discussing a topic, having an open mind about a cultural background and an understanding that we're all different and we're not going to have the same opinion. What it means to be a global citizen is being able to fit in any culture you are placed at any given time. This day and age, we're connected globally so much more than 10 years ago. And being a global citizen is all about knowing different cultures and getting to interact with different people from all around the world. And I like that Webster provides that for us. Okay, so they're talking all about global citizenship. So what are the words present there when you were watching about the video? They're talking like what? Can you Funcer, name? like different answer that there is an interconnectivity sir, towards people, sir. Yeah, another one. That's very good. So interconnectivity, or you can interact. Another word that was present there. Very awareness, important. Sir. Awareness. Awareness. Aside yes, from sir. yeah, awareness. Another one, Mr. Gabotan. Oh, Mr. Gabotan. Oh, Mr. Um, they're also talking about the appreciation of culture, sir. Yeah, the number one there is culture. Okay? So people understand that everyone in this world, we belong to different cultures. But we can expand horizons and we can have a lot of differences, but we have also similarities that we can still be united, no? And at the same time, we can expand horizons and we know all kinds of people because of this technology the world now is very small and we can interact with each other so the technology has dissolved boundaries between all the world's people 
So, wala na boundaries now. Okay? Even though we have different cultures, maybe from Africa, America, Philippines, and Asian countries, but we can expand horizons already because of technology. Here, we can communicate, we can collaborate, and celebrate across all levels of society. And global citizenship leads to what? Cultivating and understanding, acceptance, compassion, and humility. Okay? From the word there, compassion. It means consideration for others, love for others, and acceptance. Even you are from different culture, we must have this acceptance. Understanding every culture. And the word there is humility. It does not mean we are going to boast any culture that we have, but the word there is humility. Okay? So that's the second one. The third one will be digital citizenship. Okay, try to listen and watch the video. No matter where you go online, being a good digital citizen can make your online experience much smoother and safer. Thankfully, you can become a better digital citizen in just a few steps. First, always treat others as you'd like to be treated. As you go through forums, comment sections, and social media, remember you're interacting with real people. So be respectful and speak as you would if you were face to face. Insulting, bullying, or arguing with people only makes things worse, and that sort of negativity can have real life consequences. Next, don't feed the trolls you meet. Trolls are people who enjoy aggravating or arguing with others, and they're found in comment sections, message boards, or anywhere else that can cause disruption. Unfortunately, they're also fairly common. If you encounter a troll, it's best not to interact with them, as any response will likely encourage them to continue their behavior. Don't take material that doesn't belong to you. Although it seems easy to claim others' work for your own use, you still need permission to use material that isn't yours. Always think carefully about what you post online. Remember that once you submit something, you lose control of it, whether it's a message board post or a text message. That's one big reason why your digital footprint can last for many years. So don't post anything that could hurt you if someone found it years later. Be incredibly careful with your personal info. Avoid posting sensitive information, such as your mailing address, phone number, or driver's license number, as some people may try to use that information to take advantage of you. Whenever you're in doubt whether something is safe to post online, don't post it. Finally, don't believe everything you read online. Always take the time to investigate claims and confirm their reliability, especially if they seem extraordinary. That also means you shouldn't share unconfirmed info on social media, or else you could be spreading misinformation. Essentially, being a good digital citizen means you're respectful and safe wherever you go online. Okay, so that was the second video. So, I'm sure there are a lot of things there uh, talked in the video. Can you name one? Be responsible, sir, as a, as a digital citizen, sir. Very good. So, another one? Anybody? Concert oh. 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 after leave. Okay, both and go. Concert Yeah, that's the last one. Never believe everything that is posted. Okay, do your research. So, okay. How about Paul Vera? Kwanza, we must think carefully kana when posting something online kay makahurt someone's feelings. Yeah, so avoid uh, this trolling no or bullying or sometimes words can hurt others. So be respectful. Another one? Don't Chabay. own someone's work, sir. Yeah, that's very important, no? Do not own someone's work, okay? So, be careful when you post taking someone's work. That's not good, okay? Another one? 
we should respect each other's their likes, comments, posts, and their answer. Very opinions. good. Number one, the uh, part of it is you have to respect. Okay, so so there are a lot, no? And another one, very important also. Oh, Ines, go. Think before you click, sir. Yeah, think before you First, click, Ines. Be, be mindful or be careful. Please, personal information, sir. Yeah, that's very important. Okay, avoid writing everything in your uh, social media network. No, you know, maybe example, your Facebook, because sometimes people are going to use that maybe against you so there are many things that we're going to think about when we are using this technology as digital citizens digital citizenship covers appropriate and exemplary behavior in our online environment so what you were talking a while ago are all what our, our behavior in our online environment digital citizenship is about working towards making our transparent digital world safe for ourselves and others okay the world there is safe okay let's go to the next altruistic service what do you mean by the word altruistic and let's watch the video altruistic sincerely concerned about the well-being of others the billionaire is an altruistic man who gives away millions of dollars every year to various charities. Because John is an altruistic person, he has decided to spend two years of his life volunteering in Africa. Patricia hopes hundreds of altruistic people will attend her fundraising dinner. Since the celebrity is only helping the homeless in order to get media attention, she is not an altruistic individual. My altruistic daughter gave all of her allowance to the homeless man on the corner. Altruistic. Sincerely concerned about the well-being of others. Altruistic. Sincerely concerned about the well-being of others. Altruistic, sincerely concerned about the well-being of others. Okay, what do you mean by the word altruistic? Okay, very good, Mr. Roma. Sincerely concerned about the well-being of others. Okay, so do you think you are altruistic person? Yes, sir. Sometimes, sir. Sometimes. Miss Ayoko, why? Can you give me example that sometimes you are altruistic? Sir, there are times when good nga need bit of bangan, sir, for him to for him or her to stand alone. Ah, yeah, that's good so, also. Okay. So it means that you are very observant before you are going to help others. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's it. So, Mr. James, what do you say? I'm sorry. Yes, sir. I'm an altruistic person. In what yes, way? Because I like helping others, sir. Especially when they really need something. Yeah. Because nowadays, that's why do not believe everything in the internet according to the video, no? So, but I'm sure that there are also many, th many times that everything is true. That's why people are going to donate. People are going to do it. And that it can be done easily because of like Gcash or bank account. Bank account is pwede na because we can do phone banking now. So, there are many things that we can be altruistic. Motong, in the example here also that some people are trying to be altruistic but fake, uh, faking alt being altruistic, no? Because they, when there is camera, uh, that's why the same with our politicians today, uh, example like that, many people are being good when they are facing the camera. This many people are very good in giving in the church because there are many people are looking at it, okay? But if you are really an altruistic person without camera or anything, it means that is already part in your, uh, in your... I'm sorry, sir, can I share something? Yes, go. 
Um, it is about to answer um, performance and positive risk concern. This is very relevant and timely to ato ang at ang our our social community right now, especially yeah. sa Instagram. So you will see this different posts na if you are against black, eh, if you are against black, share the I repost this if you are against black and kanang you can see the one who skips. There are a lot of people who are only good at who are only good at. They think nga ang kanang by that by I they think sir nga kana ilahan di share about like you are against rape will help the problem itself when in fact it's not they're only raising this um in the social standings with us sir yeah but they are not good at I mean, many people are good uh, they can have a lot of words but they have no action at all we have a lot of politicians like that okay they are good in words but not so much good in action okay so that's why. Uh, you know, and we are going to do that one. Uh, sometimes people are going to treat other people uh, when they are not going to repost some post, no? But we have the responsibility. It is our will. It's not their will. So it is your will that you are going to follow, not them. So your conscience depends on your will also. They cannot force you to do that. So being altruistic, it means not only outside, but also deep inside you are doing it because it's your will and that's part of your value so let's continue no? so altruism defined as having a selfless the word there is selfless concern for the well-being of others because many today many people today are very selfish okay many f people today are very much focused on themselves but sometimes they are not focusing on others so it's good to be altruistic altruistic service share this world with many different people okay altruistic service is embracing the opportunity to exercise charity charity it means giving love for others okay and goodwill for the benefits of others yes go uh sir is being altruistic is being selfless or it's just balance now, see yes, sir. It can be balance or sometimes other people are going to do to give other people even they don't have a, they don't have the thing anymore. Okay, because in the church, ano nga, sometimes people are going to give even though wala na sila but they give it. But that is their value. Okay? It's better than thinking always about yourself, all about you, all about you like that. So it can be balance or it can be more than that. Okay, that is altruistic. Okay, thank okay. you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Also, the next one is very important: environmental stewardship. So, what is it? Here is the video. Hello, and welcome to Minute with Nature. I'm your host, Lauren Azuri, the park naturalist for West Bloomfield Parks. And we're inside the nature room today, talking about environmental stewardship, or how to be a good environmental steward of our land. Well, what is stewardship? It really just means the job of supervising or taking care of something. But because we're talking about environmental stewardship, we're talking about taking care of the earth. Have you ever heard of Aldo Leopold? He's a really famous person who is an environmental steward, and he actually championed the concept of environmental stewardship. And he defines it as dealing with man's relation to the land and to the animals and to the plants which grow upon it. So environmental stewardship really encompasses all of the earth, the plants, the animals, and the land, as Aldo Leopold tells us. So how can you be a good environmental steward? One of them is planting native plants. Native plants are beneficial to our ecosystem and all the animals that live here. So if you're going to plant a garden, think about trying to plant natives. Make sure you're using less fertilizer and less pesticides, or none at all if possible, um, because that does affect our environment negatively. You can also contact resource managers, like some of our West Bloomfield Park staff, for ideas on how to manage your property in order to make it more ecological friendly and more open to the environment and choices that can help animals. Um, a good resource for managing invasive species would be our Oakland County Sisma. If you have uh, invasive species on your property, it's best to remove them. Invasive species don't belong here, they didn't originally grow here, and they have no ecological value. So plants and animals here cannot use invasive species. So the best thing to do is remove invasive species and make room for new native species that have more ecological value and will bring better plants and animals to your yard. Oakland County Sisma can help you do that. They have great resources for you. 
If you contact the, the Oakland County CISMA, they can get you in touch with good contractors that are trained in this kind of management practices, as well as if it's a smaller scale and you can handle it on your own, the best way to do that as well. You can also volunteer for our park cleanup event or a garlic mustard poll. And then of course, all the other choices that you make on a daily basis that can help you be a better environmental steward. Biorecycling and reducing the waste, all of those are great ways to be an environmental steward. And that's your minute with me. Okay, that's a video, environmental stewardship. So what do you mean by that? Anybody? Taking care of our um, environment, sir. Yeah, taking care of our environment. Do you think you can call yourselves now as environmental stewards? Yes, sir. Okay, can you give me example? Yes, sir. You belong to that, yes, sir. Mr. Ristaro. Yes, during my Koan Elementary and Junior High School, sir, volunteer po, sir, about planting Koan Samong Barangay, sir, every two, every, every two times a year, sir, yes, sir. So every time yun na ay kanin, environmental related nga Koan, kanin, activity, kanin, 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 implement Samong Barangay, yeah. of course, as a citizen, it is my responsibility, sir, to, to join in that Koan, sir, event, sir. So every okay. time sa night, you're planting to join the group, I found that, kanin, ang environment can sir, is from, Panang makapagdaan sa kong feelings and also during yes. this pandemic, sir, kanang at home, sir, the plants I called kanang different kinds of species sa kanang plants, sir. Okay. Then, every time I saw kanang 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 deforestation, I feel so devastated, sir, kay, you know, plants is very important towards people, sir, because yeah. maghatag ng silaw kaming sa ato. Others, okay. Are you all environmental stewards? Okay. In what way? Can you share some example? That you are. Oh, since I was, oh, parang, since I was elementary, sir, I joined um, Girl Scout, and one of the projects in Girl Scout is to planting. And, yes. And in addition to that, is kanang cleaning up or kanang sa mga staff, sir. Yeah. So I consider yeah. myself as a uh, steward of environment because kanang I do. I did all my best, sir, to repay the nature, sir. Yeah, Claire, you're part of the cleanup drive in your place. Okay. Yes, so, what are other things? What are simple things that we can do in order to become environmental stewards? Okay, aside from tree planting, cleanup drive, what are the things that, small things that we can do? Okay, anybody? Pick up your own trash, sir. More Pick up. up. I mean, sir, okay. From our micro effect from drawing garbage, it always it have a macro effect to our society. Yeah, everything starts with you. Our environmental stewardship is a practice about common sense values. This is the appreciation for the beauty and majesty that surround us every day. Sama sa inyong gingon, you are planting, uh, you are part of tree planting. So it can really help no, in our environment. St environmental stewardship encourages every student to take a positive stand on personal, local, regional, national, and international actions regarding the preservation of what is essentially our environmental community. And that's all about environmental stewardship. So let's go now to our next uh, as part of a summary bit global digital citizens personally we face the daily possibility of online fraud we must take note of that about that identity theft and online bullying okay so we must avoid that globally even as technologically intertwined as we are there is also a level of disconnection in our lives okay so it will happen sometimes we are focused on something and we are disconnected in other things so we must have balance about it altruistically we have more means to help others yeah and this internet is very much helpful in helping others also because everything will become fast okay not just about money but also sometimes it's because of informations environmentally Growing threats such as climate change, resource depletion, industrial pollution, digital pollution, and more. So we can help our environment because of these growing threats in our climate change and the depletion of our resources.
and also in our pollution we can help it we can start it at home okay so next okay now let's check sata if you want to answer you can type it in your chat box what is the answer question number one is a review now let's check test yourself this covers appropriate and exemplary behavior in our online environments a global digital citizenship b digital citizenship c global citizenship what's the answer B A B A B A B A. Okay, we have a lot of answers. B A B A B A. And the answer is because it is online environment. Okay, B A. So we'll end the answer of C. Okay, it's good. So time now. What's the answer? What? What? The answer is letter B. Digital citizenship. Because it talks about our behavior in our online environment. Always take note. Digital citizenship talks about the online environment. Next. Now let's check again. Which of the following thoughts embody global citizenship? Okay. A. Respect diversity. B. Take responsibility for my actions. C. Will be open-minded. D. Will not hurt others. What's the answer? Okay. Which of the following thoughts embody global citizenship? A, 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 A. All these are all answers, no? All answers are correct. A, B, C, D. Part that will embody being a global citizen. The next, test yourself. Understanding that we can use technology for the benefit of ourselves and others views the world as the interconnected community and actively shares technological and human experience despite differences. These qualities are A. Global Digital Citizen B. Digital Citizen C. Global Citizen Answer mm -hmm. Inter... Okay, uh, oh, A, A, A. Okay. Very good. I'm sure you're very sure about it. And the answer is Global Digital Citizen. Next. Which is shown in this, in this scenario? Being mindful of posting in the social media. A. Digital Citizenship. B. Global Citizenship. Okay, so far. And the answer is digital citizenship. Next, which is shown in this scenario? Volunteering in the community relief operation for COVID. A, digital citizenship. B, global citizenship. Okay, volunteering in the community relief operation for COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure the answer is global citizenship, okay? Which is shown in this scenario? Show good manners and model positive values. Okay? Show good manners and model positive values. Okay, so for all the answers are letter B. The answer is? Same for letter B. Thank you. Next. Developing a reliable, independent, and accountable self shows that shows what characteristic of global digital citizenship? A. Personal responsibility. B. Global citizenship. C. Digital citizenship. D. Altruistic service. E. Environmental stewardship. Being a reliable, independent, and accountable self. Okay, the answers are flooding. Okay. Mm. The answer is personal responsibility. Okay. Next. Involving in the activities that help protect the environmental health online and offline is a characteristic of global digital citizenship. A. Personal responsibility, B. Global citizenship, C. Digital citizenship, D. Altruistic service, E. Environmental stewardship. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Very good. And the answer is... Ah, sorry. The answer is letter E, okay? Environmental stewardship. Next! Mm. Using social media to connect and support your friends and community to help promote their well-being is a characteristic of global dig digital citizenship. There will be two answers. And community to help promote their well-being is a characteristic global digital citizenship. Your friend. And the answers are personal responsibility and altruistic service. Let's go now to our next topic, the nine elements of digital citizenship. So here's the video. discussing the nine elements of digital citizenship. To begin though, it would be best to understand what digital citizenship actually is. Digital citizenship is commonly known to be the continuously developing norms of appropriate, responsible and empowered technology use. This should all be in an effort to lead and assist others in building positive digital experiences and helping users recognize that their actions and subsequent consequences can affect others. It should also be in an effort to create an understanding that we should all participate in a manner that's for the common good, in a healthy, ethical and safe way. There are nine elements to digital citizenship which further outline these principles. The first element of digital citizenship is digital access. Digital access is described as a person's complete electronic participation within society. More simply, it refers to an individual's opportunity to make use of both the internet and various electronic information and communication systems, or ICTs. The use of the internet and ICTs vastly increases our ability to communicate, work and learn, while also giving access to swathes of information. Because of this, digital access grants its users inherent socio-economic benefits. And as such, it's important for digital citizens to investigate ways to make this access more available to those without. In terms of ICTs and internet connectivity statistics, according to a 2018 study, out of the nearly 7.6 billion people worldwide, 5.1 billion people have a mobile device, while just over 4 billion are classified as internet users. That means only 68% of the population makes use of a mobile device, and only 53% are accessing or have access to the internet. This means that due to various factors, whether socio-economic or infrastructural, over 2.5 billion people do not have access to their own ICTs or the internet. In South Africa, there is only 51% internet penetration. This lack of access will have a substantial impact on a person's ability to learn and communicate in the new world that's being advanced day by day, and they will be left behind in the fourth industrial revolution, that is, technological revolution. Therefore, in order to create more efficiency and equal opportunities, as well as a higher quality of life overall, digital citizens should do their part to try and increase digital access to all. is in buying and selling of things electronically and has become a prevalent part of modern society and business. A large percentage of transactions which take place on the ever-growing market economy take place electronically or online, resulting in a decrease in physical brick and mortar stores. While this means greater access to a greater number of products to those who have digital access, it's resulting in decreased access to those who don't as sellers and retailers continue to make a move to digital platforms. This graph shows what percentage of the population buys items online in various countries and indicates only 29% of South Africans have made an online purchase. This means 71% of South Africans, due in part to choice, but also digital access and digital literacy factors, have a reduced spectrum of products to choose from. 
also, due to this relative ease and the anonymity that comes with e-commerce, goods or services can be sold and purchased which are in conflict with either local laws or morals. This brings with it its own challenges. Therefore, while digital commerce is ever on the rise and will also play a significant role in the fourth industrial revolution, trading digitally must be done with care and attention must be given to local law. Digital communication is defined as an electronic exchange of information and it has revolutionized modern society. This is due to the nature of digital communication in that through ICTs it allows for constant communication to take place or be stored at any and all times at virtually any location. This process can occur instantly too and thus increases the efficiency of communication and other digital exchanges. Corporately, most communication is exchanged by email or dedicated office communication apps like HipChat or Slack. Socially though, the most common communication platforms worldwide are WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger, with the majority of South Africans preferring WhatsApp. Digital communication also allows for relative anonymity, however, and thus can encourage poor behavior, including cyberbullying. According to a study done by Forbes, South Africa has the fourth highest rate of cyberbullying, with 25% of children reporting that they have been cyberbullied to their parents. Digital communication is a powerful tool which can be used to increase productivity and one we should be encouraging others to make use of. It's also just really convenient. But as a tool, it can also be used in harmful ways and as such, we should also encourage those around us to use it positively and constructively. literacy is the process of learning and teaching technology and is a key issue in current society. As technology becomes a greater influence and tool in modern society, teaching individuals how to use it is critical. If it's not taught or learned by an individual, they will immediately be at a disadvantage, as being able to make use of ICTs and the internet allows for key learning and communication opportunities. There is a lot of information available on digital platforms though, and some of it is not accurate. Being digitally literate means not only being able to use ICTs in a technical sense, but also means being able to differentiate the information accessible through them. Business, economic activity, social media, news, and various other activities predominantly take place digitally, and thus require a level of literacy for participation. Being literate and keeping up with technological changes can be difficult though. And so the five fluencies, being solution fluency, creative fluency, collaboration fluency, media fluency and information fluency can help in staying abreast of the constant development. Also, being digitally literate isn't just about taking. Once someone is digitally literate and has the technical ability to use ICTs, they will also be able to collaborate and teach on various digital platforms making their own contribution to society. Having digital literacy is just as important as having digital access, because owning an ICT and not being able to use it effectively is fruitless. Technology is always evolving, however, and thus the learning process is an ever-continuing one. also known as netiquette, are electronic standards with regard to digital conduct or procedures, and it's an area within digital citizenship which faces pressing problems. Wow. In essence, it entails your good behaviour and following of correct procedures in the digital environment. While it seems natural to recognise inappropriate or poor behaviour online when we see it, many users are not informed of proper digital etiquette before they start communicating on their platform of choice. In addition to that, 55% of human communication is made up of body language, 38% of the tone of our voice, and only 7% are actual words. In theory, this means that when communicating digitally, which is most often in writing, only 7% of our message gets through to the recipient. Because of that, being conscious of our words in an online or digital setting is crucial. 
Social media is a vast platform for communication, and thus a major setting for digital etiquette, and its popularity is on the rise. In 2017, there was a 30% increase in active social media users. That equates to over 362 million new users, which will interact with the online world at large, and who will need to learn or be taught digital etiquette. Once again, however, due to an individual's ability to remain relatively anonymous online, a lack of digital etiquette is not only due to ignorance or lack of guidance, but also a blatant desire to hurt and do damage with little repercussions. Digital etiquette largely translates from how an individual will interact with someone away from the keyboard, and that's something which is learned through childhood training and values. Not everyone has positive values ingrained in them through this process though, and might not know better. Either way, as digital citizens, we should do our part to guide and teach others on the internet about proper etiquette, and enforce positive behaviour in the young people we have in our own social circles to create a positive digital environment for all. Digital law is the electronic responsibility of digital citizens for their actions and deeds. And unfortunately, there's also an area of digital citizenship which is struggling. It refers to the ethical and unethical behaviour and actions which take place digitally or online and apply to any individual who makes use of the digital access. Digitally executed crimes such as hacking, plagiarising and cyber-terrorism is unethical behaviour while abiding by rules and regulations formed by law, society, is ethical behaviour. It's believed that only 10% of all internet content is available through traditional or surface browsers such as Chrome and Firefox, with 90% of the content only being available through specialised browsers such as Tor. This remaining 90% is what we call the deep or dark web, and the content is believed to be mostly unethical or illegal and is highly unregulated. Digital law doesn't only apply in a personal sense, however, but is also applicable to business and academic settings in which a person finds themselves. For instance, legal and ethical use of a company-owned ICT must be adhered to, as well as respecting copyrighted work and creating content for the business. In South Africa, some digital activity is regulated by the Electronic Communications and Transactions Act, but it mostly is aimed towards business. There are continual parliamentary debates, however, discussing the need for more encompassing digital laws. And so, just as citizens of a physical nation need to adhere to laws and regulations for the best experience possible, one characterised by fairness and justice, so digital citizens should also adhere to digital law. Once more, teaching these concepts and principles to the young and those joining the digital landscape at an early stage is important. Described as the freedoms which exist and are extended to all those in the digital world and how one is expected to behave accordingly, digital rights and responsibilities are an important element of being a digital citizen. As for citizens of most nations, online citizens enjoy certain rights and responsibilities. These rights are not codified, but include free expression and privacy. Many nations will also have codified law which outlines the rights and responsibilities of internet users, often including in and of itself the right to digital and internet access. In South Africa itself, there has been a huge movement to make internet access a basic human right, as it's believed to fall in line with the constitutional rights to information. As digital rights and responsibilities can be ambiguous and misunderstood, efforts must be made to determine and educate users on the appropriate use, rights and responsibilities associated with digital access. Digital access is not simply a case of use and abuse. Digital health and wellness encompasses an individual's physical and physiological well-being within a digital landscape and on necessary considerations for an optimal and safe digital experience. As our dependence on digital technology in day-to-day -day life increases, so does the importance of making it a sustainable and healthy activity. Incurring physiological ailments due to poor ergonomics, such as repetitive strain injury syndrome and carpal tunnel, or psychological issues such as complete internet addiction, 
or the overall improper use of electronic equipment and the internet can impair our ability to use technology and thus can have extremely negative socio-economic effects. Both social media consumption and the playing of video games can be highly addictive and even lead to modern mental conditions. Just recently, the World Health Organization itself has officially declared gaming disorder an illness, placing it among gambling disorders due to its addictive nature. Used incorrectly or simply overused, digital access and ICTs can lead to serious health problems. Therefore, Digital citizens should educate themselves on proper use and health with regard to digital devices and share that information to those in their sphere of influence to help reduce easily avoidable injuries and illnesses. This way, a culture of safety and health can be created in the digital landscape. The main objective of digital security is to ensure that the use of digital information and their related systems are without interference, data collection and unauthorized access. As with any real world environment, there exists in the digital and online environment those who steal, exploit, disrupt and defame other people. These people create software which steals information in order to gain unauthorized access to private data and services. This could be for a variety of reasons but are often in order to perpetrate fraud or blackmail. More recently, this has been in order to mine personal information for use or resale in the mass marketing sector. Examples of what can happen when security is breached maliciously is ransomware. This is when malware attacks a computer and encrypts information on the device. The perpetrator then demands money for the release of the user's information. The most well-known example of this type of malware is CryptoLocker, whose creators made tens of millions of rand before being shut down. Therefore, just as we do whatever is possible to keep ourselves safe in the physical world, we need to secure our digital world as well, ensuring backups of information and effective access and malware controls are in place. And there you have it, the nine elements of digital citizenship, each unique but important in their role. The cornerstone of them all being digital access. While digital access is certainly on the rise, as digital citizens we need to do our part in increasing access to all, so that all can have equal opportunities to make the best of their lives. Once that's been achieved, and even on the journey to that point, we also need to help those individuals understand and take on the other elements of being a digital citizen. In doing so, we will ensure that they not only have access to the digital landscape. When you enumerate the nine elements of digital citizenship, number one is, can you name one? Digital? Digital access. Digital access. Yeah, digital access. Another one? Digital, digital, digital commerce. Digital commerce. Okay. Another one? Digital communication. Digital communication. Number three is communication. Digital, all digital communication. Another one? Digital digital literacy. Digital literacy. Uh -huh. The next one is digital literacy. Next one, digital. Digital etiquette and responsibility. Oh, uh, I'm sure literacy is the next one is etiquette. Okay. Etiquette. Yeah, etiquette. Yes, then the next one is digital. Digital law. Yeah, digital law. That's the next one. I go let me arrange uh. The next is digital. Digital rights and responsibilities. Digital rights and responsibilities. And the next one. Digital. Digital health and wellness. 
very important also is digital health and, health and wellness and the last one digital security digital security very good you got it okay you got a lot now one two three four five six seven eight nine so I'm sure it was it was well explained also so so far in the video talks about that even though many people are participating but only few people are using the like computers the internet but the rest is more on mobile devices okay then digital commerce electronic buying and selling of gold uh, selling of goods so we have that one and the highest a user of this digital commerce is United Kingdom according to the video and communication also that uh, mostly email chat and most people are using the Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp chat what's up what's up okay another one is digital literacy teaching and learning technology okay about the use of technology so we are very much uh, Moto English Salty that we have also fluency, big solution, information, and creativity fluency, collaboration fluency, and even media fluency. Then the next one is digital etiquette, very important, electronic standards of conduct and procedure. And number one, another one is digital law, electronic responsibility for actions and deeds. Okay, they're gonna get mga case of hacking. Uh, plagiarism and another frauds, no identity theft. Monang nagita ay digital law. So ano panahon you can bully people. You can pwede ka magpakauwa other people, but today because of cyber crime law, alana everything is restrained, no. Next, we have also this digital rights and responsibilities. These are the freedoms and extended freedoms extended to anyone, okay. We have all the rights. That's why katong giingon ganina ni Mr. Gabutan nga people are going to force you to do it, but they cannot force you. You have the rights and you have the responsibility also as a person. And we have the law also. Number eight, digital health and wellness. This is the physical and psychological well-being that many people have, for have forgotten. Okay, Many people forget about this digital health and wellness. Labina most especially mga teachers. Because they're very busy in their works, making lesson plan, making uh, preparations. Sometimes they forget about health and wellness. Next, the last one is digital security. Electronic precautions to guarantee safety. Very important. That's why you don't have to share your password. Pinaka nearest person that you are going to share your password, maybe your parents. Okay? Now let's check. Okay. What element in digital citizenship is exemplified by following the experience of Marl Antoinette where she shared how she deals with stress brought about the hectic online classes? A. Digital health and wellness B. Digital security C. Digital communication D. Digital etiquette What's your answer? Marl Antoinette where she shared how she deals with stress brought about by the hectic online classes what's your answer mm -hmm. okay i am sure the answer is letter letter a digital and wellness very good okay next what element in digital citizenship is exemplified by following experience shared by feral on how she learned not to discriminately post products she sold online without the consent of the brand owners. Okay. A. Digital commerce. B. Digital security. C. Digital law. C. D. Digital, uh, D, G, digital law. C. Digital, digital communication. The answer. How she learned not to discriminately post products she sold online. Without, without the consent of the brand owners. Next. What element in digital citizenship is exemplified by the following experience of Claudine? Where she emphasized how it is imperative to give proper credits to authors 
and owners of content you share online or even offline as well. A. Digital commerce. B. Digital security. C. Digital communication. D. Digital law. Mm -hmm. So the trend is everyone is answering letter D. The answer is letter D. Digital law. Thank you very much. Next. What element in digital citizenship is exemplified by the following experience of Glenda? Where she shared how she learned from her negative experience, how she can be a better person online by getting her thoughts across as clearly as possible. Again, okay. Glenda, where she shared how she learned from her negative experience how she can be a better person online by getting her thoughts across as clearly as possible. Mm -hmm. And the answer is, there can be two answers. It can be what? Digital communication and digital responsibilities. Okay? So it can be C or letter B. Next. You're going to answer this in your forum, module 7 forum. Okay, here's the direction of the forum. Direction. Choose only four questions to answer out of six questions. But when you answer, write first the question and then write your answer. Again, write first the question and then write your answer. You can exit now and you can go to forum to answer four questions out of six questions. Okay? Thank you so much for coming. Go now to your forum. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Thank you sir. Bye-bye. Good luck. Answer your forum. Thank you, sir. Good luck. God bless you all. So this is now the module 7 forum and these are the names of the students who have answered the forum.